definition I have dictated you in the classroom as well. So I'll just read it. Literary criticism is the name given to works written by experts who critique. Uh, it's a comma there. Critique, analyze an author's work. So critique is appreciation, obviously, and then uh, the drawbacks, um, the criticism. But that criticism does not mean that you are complaining or the person is complaining um, about uh, the, the book or the work or the writer or showing disapproval. Right. So this is the next line as well. It does not mean to criticize as in complaint or disapproval. This is the word disapproval. I need to change that. Okay, literary criticism is often referred to as a secondary source. So why secondary source? I mean, uh, I think we have discussed this so much, so many times uh, in detail about what is literary criticism and what the critic is supposed to do, not just appreciate, but also go beyond just appreciation and, uh, you know, criticizing. And uh, the critic uh, uh, usually uh, makes, uh, makes the text logical, reasonable, by relating to the cultural values and the cultures and ideologies of uh, the society or different societies as well. So there's a connection between it. So the last line is literary criticism is often referred to as a secondary source. Why a secondary source? Any idea or any guess? Anyone? Uh, criticism is on the works already done. On the works already done. OK. <laughs> but um, literary criticism, as, I, as we have just discussed, it's not only um, appreciation or it's uh, not only like um, uh, finding faults or drawbacks in the text, but trying to link it with the uh, cultures of the society. This is, I mean, there is a lot of things. Uh, there are a lot of things in uh, which come under literary criticism, not just appreciating the task or the work and not just like uh, uh, talking about the negative aspects of the work as well. So, uh, for example, a writer has written a book, any book, maybe literature, poem. So the literary, the, the critic will come at the second place when he is going to appreciate or critique the work. Who is the first, who are the first people or who is the primary source who actually read the work? Who are the ones, um, I mean, secondary source is something like, for example, I'll give you uh, the example of awards. Award shows, they can up the money. So, uh, for example, there is a best actor award according to the um, public opinion, fine. And then there is a best actor award according to the critics' opinion, fine. That's an anal analogy. So, who's going to be what is uh, actually the primary source? Yeah, All right, I just gave you an example that the best actor award, according to the public opinion, according to the people, and then the best actor award, according to the critics' opinion. Ma'am, a scholar, I mean, the primary source is source of a scholar or hoga, the source is only a scholar, source cast among the scholar, hoga, the secondary, a wo, matlab. एक आम आदमी मतलब कि वो भी स्कॉलर ही होगा मगर वो फर्स्ट हैंड इंफॉर्मेशन को इस्तेमाल करेगा अपने राइटिंग में नो यू आर नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग द क्वेश्चन लिटरेरी क्रिटिसिज्म इज अ मेजर फील्ड इज इज अ बिग फील्ड हु अप्लाइज क्रिटिसिज्म दैट इज क्रिटिक सो लिटरेरी क्रिटिसिज्म इज अ सेकेंडरी सोर्स मींस दैट द क्रिटिक्स ओपिनियन विल बी द सेकेंडरी सोर्स फाइन so whose um, opinion uh, will be the primary source? Ma'am, the author of the author. How can the author be the primary source? <laughs> okay, so I gave you a very good example. It was actually an analogy that the award of the best actor or best actors according to the public. Who are the public? Audience. Audience. Secondary source. Because 
ji mohammad nadeem has written in its readers readers i mean you are also um, i mean you readers are more in number as compared to the critics so for example that novel that came out harry potter no novel i think everyone in the world has read it right so the readers are more but then comes the critics the critics usually are from their own uh, native language agar wo english mein likha hua hai to obviously mostly i mean will be from them from you know their own culture their own um uh, first language so the critics might not be as many uh, in number as compared to the readers yes the readers opinion readers are not critics but you know the popularity of a play of a work or you know the authenticity of the work it is decided by the readers or the audience or the public they are the ones who are more in number who read or view something fine if anything has become famous it's going to be read or um it's 5 o'clock and still people are joining in amir hamza mm -hmm. so sorry so uh, the readers are the ones or the audience uh, is the one that is the primary source people are going to at least uh, talk about the work first of all although they are not critics but every reader becomes a critic as well if that reader has read so i mean more maybe two or three more other texts as well so a comparison can be made accord and then every reader has a mental framework as well every reader is going to associate to that text baat samajh aa rahi for example you're watching a play everyone you know um, if the play has um, uh, uh, talks about the social issues any social issue maybe unemployment maybe you know gender issues we automatically you know associate ourselves with the play same is the case with the with the work with the uh, book with the novel uh, play, that play i was talking about the you know uh, television play but here we can also associate we as readers also associate ourselves with the with the uh, work that we are reading especially novels so um, the reader is also a kind of a critic as well uh, on its own not actually a critic but uh, the reader is going to judge the book or the novel uh, according to his own experiences past experiences um, environment social environment uh, and then we also sympathize i mean we feel um, aestheticism uh, when we read uh, a work a good work or when we watch plays and right? that's why i mean we associate ourselves with with the plays or with the, with the characters inside the play or with the characters inside the novel we associate with, uh, ourselves with them a pakistani plays um, i guess most of us we watch those plays and there have been so many you know famous popular plays in which we uh, associate ourselves with them we sympathize with the characters wo jo famous hua the drama mere paas tum ho i think everyone would would have must have watched it everyone has especially females unhone you know, sab nahi dekha hoga zindagi guzar hai okay so these are the plays which like uh, we associate with i mean because wo wohi discuss kar rahe hain jo hamari lives mein chal chal rahe hain social issues are the same stories are almost like authentic uh, about real life reality about social lives so same is the case here uh, in the in the in the literature in the written works as well in poems in novels in plays so the primary source has to be the readers has to be the audience has to be the public public hi hai ya readers hi hai ya jo ye decide karte hain whether the you know work is worth reading or not ya to usko bahut zyada famous kar denge ya usko bilkul hi matlab they would say like it's not a good play and it's you said you know the rating and the comments that really matters a lot so the public decides first of all what kind of a play is it which aspect to study which aspect not to study and then comes the critic uh kis mein the okay okay then after that comes a critic which not only talks about the good and the bad points that critic uh thinks beyond the you know um, public or uh, the common man which is actually the readers wo usse beyond i mean they talk about it something uh, beyond the, uh, you know thinking of the readers as well because they are the ones who are expert 
सो रीडर माइट लाइक अ नॉवल जिसमें यू नो सुपर हीरो क्वालिटीज हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ फीमेल इज हैविंग अ सुपर हीरो क्वालिटीज और मे बी अ बॉय और मे बी अ मैन रीडर्स तो उसको पसंद ही करेंगे ना बट द क्रिटिक्स वुड कम एंड से दैट दिस इज समथिंग विच इज फिक्शनल विच इज नॉट विच इज इमेजिनरी विच इज नॉट रेलिवेंट टू आर सोसाइटी विच इज नॉट रेलिवेंट टू आर कल्चर Uh, I mean, they are going to think beyond the thinking of the readers. But the primary source, especially if it's a real story, a fictional na bio, a real story, even then, the readers uh, they play a very important role in in uh, uh, promoting the text and promoting the work, and they also their opinions also matter. Is का मतलब ये नहीं है कि like uh, only critics' opinions matter and the readers' opinions don't matter. Readers' opinions they become viral more uh, easily. As compared to the critics, critics को तो कुछ लोग सुनते हैं कुछ नहीं सुनते हैं मतलब mostly लोग नहीं सुनते हैं but again critics opinions especially when when there is like a conference or when there is a, no, uh, you know ratings जब हो रही होती है तो critics की opinions भी बहुत matter करती हैं sorry critics की opinions ही matter करती हैं so uh, this is the difference uh, between uh, the readers and the critic and the primary source and the secondary source so this is the second definition of literary criticism which i think i also dictated in your class that is the study discussion evaluation and interpretation of literature then um, literary criticism asks what literature is what it does and what it is worth ice cream wala bhi aa gaya okay asks what literature is what it does and what it is worth so um it is like again uh, uh, as a common man i would never uh, think about what is the worth of this thing that i'm reading kyunki maine imran series bhi padhi hui hai jo ki intehai useless hai jo ki ab mujhe pata chala hai ki useless hai but i spent like a whole whole month reading those kind of books like imran series so a critic is going to think about what it what it what is the worth of this you know work and what it does again the benefit the outcome uh, outcome of that work which is going to be relevant or irrelevant to the society matlab society mein uska kya kaam hai right so this is what the critic uh, will definitely think about literary criticism is the method used to interpret any given work of literature the different schools of literary criticism provide us with lenses which ultimately reveal important aspects of the literary work so um again literary criticism is the method to use to interpret any given work of literature now literary criticism is is a very broader term right hum kehte to hain ki isko appreciate ya usko negative aspects nikalne hain and then um usko link karna hai uh, culture ke sath values ke sath but how uh, would that happen it's not going to happen in the air it's not going to be something random right literary criticism is a broader term and uh, for for you know this uh, for to interpret any given work of literature we need some specific parameter something that which which help which will help us to um, interpret the given te text and that is the lenses and those lenses are basically literary theories literary theories um, are called lenses we need to look at the text through a lens and there is not just one lens there are like um, multiple lenses so a work a single work can offer uh, lots of interpretation from different angles but we cannot like uh, talk about every interpretation or every angle at one time we can only uh, i mean talk about the text according to one one lens and then at a time one lens at a time so that's why uh, in order to be focused in order to be organized systematic and patterned we need a literary theory मतलब एक कोई भी आर लिटरेचर आई मीन इफ यू टेक एनी पीस ऑफ लिटरेचर आई मीन एनी नॉवल उसके अंदर से बहुत सारे थीम्स कॉन्सेप्ट्स निकल सकते हैं ना इट दैट टेक्स्ट माइट बी टॉकिंग अबाउट कैपिटलिज्म ऑफ द सोसाइटी दैट टेक्स्ट माइट बी टॉकिंग अबाउट साइकोलॉजिकल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द पीपल दैट टेक्स्ट सेम सेम टेक्स्ट माइट बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द जेंडर इशूज एज वेल सो वी कैन नॉट टॉक अबाउट एवरी थिंग इन इन वन गो and if we do that will be haphazard that will be uh, uh, not organized unorganized and um, uh, not like systematic so in order to be focused systematic logical as well we need uh, one lens at a time and then according to that lens we need to interpret and that lens is basically literary theory i hope it's clear
yes ma'am yes ma'am and i hope i am not going fast because uh, last class me ek session see ki ek student ne kaha that i was going a bit fast all right why do we have to analyze everything now this is something which is a very general question uh, after reading the you know definitions of literary criticism we should ask this question from ourselves as as uh, uh, a person and then whatever we read uh, i mean not just we don't we don't have to be a critic to analyze and anything even if we read for example a short poem or we are reading a short story which is maybe a one paragraph from the story then why do we have to analyze it but generally talking about why do we need analysis so uh, number one is talking about experiences enhances our enjoyment of them so this is i think if uh, this is very much clear very very natural if you have uh, uh, good experiences in your past if you have had not all of them but some of them you always feel happy to talk about them for example you have uh, achieved a gold medal obviously you will be happy to talk about it again and again and even if it it wasn't a you know very good uh, experience uh, but still uh, like for example maybe an incident in which you were about to meet an accident but then you survived wo bhi ek experience um, that's also a, you know uh, worth telling others so this uh, talking about experiences uh, it really helps uh, to you you to become happy because that has passed whether good or bad that experience or that thing uh, that event has passed now so it will you know um, just uh, uh, be, be saved in your memory all the experiences will be saved in your memory and then you will always be happy to talk about it number 2 talking about experiences involves the search for meaning which increases our understanding of them so when you are talking to someone for example uh, maybe uh, just one person maybe two or maybe in in a uh, to, uh, to to a group of people in in a hall or in you know in in a classroom when you talking about experiences there will be some questions coming from the other side as well so when there are questions coming from the other side they will compel you to search for new things search for meanings search for you know uh, which will in increase your understanding so Or, or just if you're just thinking about your experience, you're not speaking. Even then, uh, you'll be, you know, you'll remember something which you were, you did not focus on uh, that thing in the past, and you start thinking about it, or you you, you just start, you know, searching about it. So uh, this is something which is good. You need to analyze yourself every day, and you need to analyze yourself every day, especially before going to bed. Uh, what did you study today? What did you what what a good thing you did today what a good act you did today and uh, what did you what what new things did you learn today especially if uh, from a language student from a language point of view how many new words you have uh, learned today and how many new ideas you have learned today so this is self analysis you should do self analysis on daily basis or agar nahi ho sakta to at least once a week you should do self analysis Okay, because Socrates said so. The life which is unexamined is not worth living. Very well said. So, if you are not going to do a self analysis, if you are not uh, judging or analyzing yourself, then obviously um, you think that you are the best, and whatever you are doing is good, and you will you'll be you know you will keep on doing that. So, self analysis is also is very important. Um, analysis done by the others is also good, but uh, these days we don't you know. like um, other people's opinions we don't have that tolerance level anymore uh, and we don't want people to give us suggestions advices or you know anything so uh, if we are intolerant to that to phir to yahi hai ki at least do your own self analysis whether you are doing something right or wrong or what are you doing or and, and whether you have learned something or not to further explain the literary criticism helps us to understand what is important about the text right so this is again uh, the broader term literary criticism or li applying the theory literary theory it helps us to uh, understand what is important about the text its its structure its context that is uh, whether it's a social uh, context uh, because the stories can talk about the social you know aspects economic historical uh, what is written uh how the text manipulates the reader this is also very important manipulates means that when the reader associates uh, him or herself with the text uh there there have been many cases especially when i watch movies uh i relate myself 
to that scenario especially if it's a action movie or it's um, especially in action movies or sports movies in which there are female you know heroes or actors i like to relate myself to them okay so that's not just manip manipulation does not mean uh, uh, in a negative way uh, but sometimes it's in a positive way it really motivates you more that you should also do that right it it helps us to get out of a uh, bed and do something different do something new and then there can be some negative aspect as well uh, like uh, brainwashing or something like the media does that more as compared to the books um, but sometimes the books can also uh, do that uh, and there is more literary criticism helps us to understand the relationship between authors readers and the text that this is again um, a very important thing uh, the 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 relationship between texts and readers is more important is most important and when you understand the text then obviously you will understand the author as well right so the relationship is very important in order to analyze the text in order to understand the story uh, to interpret it in uh, through different lenses uh, you need to understand the text and the author as well and the age of author in which the the author or the writer has written what was the scenario what was the you know uh, time period at that time and then uh, let the the act of literary criticism ultimately enhances the enjoyment of our reading of the literary work so when you are uh, critically analyzing a text uh, it really helps you to um, uh, gain a lot of knowledge so which in, which actually improves our which which actually makes us happy we 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 enjoy that uh, why because we are understanding the text aap ek text padhte hain which is i'll give you some text as well lekin uh, for example ek text padhte hain jo ke superficial level pe is just a story about a family and they're going to the park and they're coming back obviously you won't be able to understand so many things but when you analyze it um first of all literally matlab lit uh, literally uh sorry if when you going to do a literal uh, literary analysis that is taking out like similes metaphors a lit figurative uh, language it will a little bit you know make sense but then when you going to apply the theory it will really help you to understand the underlying the deeper meaning so it really uh, when you and when you understand the text it really helps you to uh, enjoy the text as well um okay i think we're going to this is okay literary criticism has two functions that is number 1 to an analyze study and evaluate works of literature we have already done that number 2 to form general principles of the examination of works of literature these general principles are the same jo ke maine abhi aapko bataya tha that the critic relates the uh, text with the you know principles the cultures ideologies of of the society as well that's the general principles ji coming to the critic but i'll come back to you guys as well you guys are 24 now was that clear yes ma'am yes ma'am okay only hasan and rubina is speaking what about sidra basi please repeat the last slide okay ji, i'll repeat that sidra basi ji ma'am i understood what you was said okay okay uh faz फैज अब अभी तक लेटे में ओके ही इज नॉट हियर आइदर ही स्लीपिंग और ही हैज गॉन फॉर टी क्योंकि इस टाइम पे खाना तो हो नहीं सकता सो दे डेफिनेटली ही हैज गॉन फॉर टी व्हाट अबाउट अमीर हमजा यस मैम ओके यू आर विद अस गुड ओके सो दिस वाज द लास्ट स्लाइड and let me enlarge it uh all right so to analyze uh, literary criticism has two main functions to analyze study evaluate works of literature this is i think um, easy to understand number two is to form general principles of examination uh, examination of works of literature um uh, when we talk about literary criticism i have already told you uh, literary criticism is a broader term is it's an umbrella term when we are going to critically analyze it literary criticism ke andar kya aata hai that is literary theory which is more i mean there are other things as well but literary theory is something which is more important right so literary theory we have to apply literary theory in order to critically analyze a text 
so gen the, the theories have already been made by the by the writers or by the you know critics or by wh whoever the, the experts sorry uh, the, those theories have already been made like marxist uh, marxism feminism uh, post uh, colonialism post uh, so, sorry uh, yeah, post deconstruction theories and all these theories, these have already been made by the you know, experts. So those are the those, they have some principles. They have some point um, important points. Every theory has uh, basic important points, uh, and those we have to take, uh, to analyze the text through with the help of these those points. But the big framework, and has her theory ka ek framework hoga. For example, Marxism hai, uska ek framework hoga, and uh, uh, like. Six, five, six points to hong the main points hong just ki upar puri theory mila base karti hai. You can always, you know, take out the summary of the theory and then apply those five, six points on the text. Find out about the uh, bourgeois of the society, about like jobi mila buske five, uh, six points hai. You can do that. So um, when when we are analyzing, critically analyzing a text, we are making, uh, we are forming general principles as well or we are actually um, applying the theory and make and interpreting in our own way but her student her reader Joanna they they have their own mental framework as well they apply the theory but then they uh, in the end uh, they have to give their own opinions as well theory could apply karing and like in uske baad apna opinion bhi dehenge. so every reader's opinion will be different from the others so this is something which is going to be um, general so to form Principles for the examination of works like principles means that how to apply the theory and then how to uh, examine the work of literature, how we are going to examine the work. But here we are talking about the literary criticism. So general principles are the theories, literary theories. But then that will obviously mix up with your own opinion as well. I hope it's clear. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so next is uh, the critic. Critic ke upar sirf do teen slides hai. We, we discussed the definition of critic in the classroom as well. Um, but uh, let's just go over it quickly. A critic is one who passes ju judgment. This is a very uh, small, precise kind of uh, meaning of a critic. It's not a definition. It's a meaning because upar etymology likha hai. And it was taken from this source here. Uh, it's a critique and it's taken from somewhere. So in 17th and 18th centuries, the critic was considered a judge who finds the faults and merits of the literary work. This was thought in the 17th and 18th centuries, uh, who used to find faults and merits of a literary work. Nowadays, what is a who is a literary critic? Uh, a literary critic is not someone who merely evaluates the worth or quality of a piece of literature. Okay, we have read that the 17th and 18th century uh, critics, they used to do this thing, that is to find out the worth or the quality of the piece of literature. But uh, now, uh, rather, uh, uh, is someone who argues on behalf of an interpretation or understanding of the particular meaning of the literary text. So definitely who argues on behalf of the interpretation. So interpretations are made by the critics as well. Um, evaluation is made by the critic, but then uh, that that critic is going to make it logical as well, and that critic is going to make reasonable as well by arguing. So logical uh, aspect has to be there, and then the you know reasonable aspect has to be there as well because the critic thinks beyond uh, the you know just finding out the merit and uh, um, the drawbacks of of any work. Okay, second point is uh, the task of a literary critic is to explain uh, an attempt to reach a critical understanding of what literary texts mean in terms of their aesthetic as well as social, political, cultural statements and suggestions. The same thing that we have discussed earlier as well, that uh, it's not a literature or literary, uh, literary piece is not, not just for aestheticism, but also uh the the critic tries to make make uh, an understanding of or make a connection of the text with uh socio political and economic you know culture uh sorry the the background sorry uh, settings socio political economic settings as well as the culture as well 
there's always a link and a tr because um, that's what critics do they try to make it logical as well according to the ideology or the culture of the society so whatever the society or the whatever is the social social um, social setting of the society uh, he will try to make it a link with the social society uh, social sorry setting political setting or the cultural uh, setting as well or the culture is in the different um, values and ideologies as well so this is what what the you know critic tries to explain uh, aestheticism ke bare mein to i mean we can also uh, say it without any you know uh, doubt that uh, literature any literary piece is for aestheticism uh, but uh, he the critic also tries to you know highlight this thing if there if if the work is of good quality then he also highlights this thing as well that the language is good or uh, the re the writer has tried to capture the you know attention of the readers through through the language through the setting through the um, representation of the characters well yes of which aestheticism may happen so although we we as readers would know that but he uh, if the work is good critic can also talk about that and we can talk about the social um, settings or society uh, political aspects agar koi political aspects hain um, and then the cultural values as well so this is how the critic does and then a literary critic uh, does more than simply discuss or evaluate the importance of the literary texts uh, rather okay a literary critic seeks to reach a logical and reasonable understanding of not only what a text's author intends for it to mean but also what different cultures and ideologies render it capable of meaning this was the definition that i dictated you in the classroom and uh, this is what i have i've just uh, you know explained it to you because the last uh, definition and this definition is almost the same so wording ka fark hota hai but they are almost the same all right we are done with the uh, critic and literary theory again we i dictated you these definitions as well but we didn't discuss the literary theories um, the topic literary theory in a little bit detail so i'll just do that so a very basic view of thinking about literary theory is that the these ideas act as different lenses critics used to view and talk about art literature and even culture right so this is um, Uh, the definition that i dictated you and uh, again uh, even in this uh, the word lenses has been used uh, and that the word lenses which which critics use to view and talk about the literature and art so they also uh, criti critically evaluate the text according to a uh, lens one or two or three lenses that those lenses are basically literary theories all right uh these different lenses allow critics to consider works of art based on certain assumptions within that school of theory to consider works of art okay so basically every person uh, will have assumptions about uh, or you know they, because human beings they think alike uh uh we when we are going to read a, a text we we might you know interpret it almost in the same way and same is the case with the critic as well a critic might also you know interpret the text in the same way but uh he will apply some logic a uh, logical sense to it and that is again through through the through the lenses so he will definitely consider the work to work of arts which are actually based on assumptions but he will try to prove those assumptions as as right or wrong uh by uh, applying the lenses or by applying the theories theek hai the different lenses also allow critics to focus on particular aspects of the work they consider important uh, so anyways um, particular aspects uh, again the same point the same thing uh, it's actually a repetition that uh, there are so many aspects in one uh, uh, sorry in word in, in any one work whether it's a novel or a, a poem or 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 a drama or a play there 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 are lots of aspects you know we can interpret it through different aspects different themes different ideas um, but obviously we we cannot uh, focus on on one aspect at a time if we are not applying a literary theory so critics basically they can focus on uh, one aspect at a time because they are they are experts first of all and they apply the theory in a in a you know a better way as compared to us when we are reading a book we are not applying a theory remember this thing 
we are never applying any theory to it. But when a critic analyzes it critically, he will definitely be applying one lens at a time and in order to focus on the particular aspect. That is one aspect. OK. Uh, then mod modern literary criticism is often informed by literary theory. So this is. Is um, in in the past literary criticism, as I've just mentioned mentioned you earlier as well. That uh, any uh, critical analysis, right? So. Uh, third year, fourth semester, I many students ko tha because they were actually using uh, reading. Ma'am, is it just me? Yeah. मैम हम लोगों को आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही और राइट आई जस्ट चेंज द कनेक्शन uh, एक दो दिन से ये थोड़ा सा प्रॉब्लम आ रहा है इसमें कनेक्शन में भी जी अभी आवाज क्लियर है यस मैम यस मैम राइट राइट थैंक यू ओके सो टू थ्री स्लाइड्स ऑफ लिटरी थियोरी आर लेफ्ट एंड देन विल फिनिश विद इट बिकॉज़ आई हैव अनदर क्लास इज वेल Okay. So, is it uh, clear? Okay. So, modern literary criticism is often informed by literary theory, which is a philosophical discussion of its methods and goals. So, uh, the modern literary theory criticism depends on literary theory. Without the literary theory, literary theory, you won't be able to critically evaluate it or analyze it. Right? There has to be a literary theory. For example, if a critic is working with certain Marxist theories, he or she might focus on how the characters in the story interact based on their economic situation. So obviously, uh, when it's a Marxism theory or Marxist theories, uh, there has to be uh, the, 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 there has to be division in the society. One is going to be an upper class, and the other one is definitely going to be a not the lower class, poorer class, poorest class, I guess, and how they are interacting with one another. And how the uh, the upper class, especially one person or one group of people, how they are controlling uh, the the people from the lower class, controlling them and you know manipulating them. Uh, then there is, if a critic is working with the post colonial colonial theories, he or she might consider the same story but look at how characters from the colonial powers, for example, Britain, France, and even America, treat characters from, say, Africa or the Caribbean. So the text might be the same. But in the same text, you will find you might find two or three story uh, theories coming. Uh, you know, uh, two or three theories can be applied to the same text as well. So the the novels written about the people from Africa or um, South Asia, maybe India, Pakistan, the subcontinent, 
they, they definitely they will be uh, uh, post cranial theory will definitely be applied on it first of all secondly marxism be apply hoga because the the people of uh, those who are um, the british or the uh, french people who are actually controlling uh, that who, who actually control that place or the colonize that area they were actually uh, the people from the upper class as well so marxism be apply hoti hai so dono the theories uh, two or three theories can be applied on the same text then literary theory proposes particular systematic approaches to literary texts that impose a particular line of intellectual reasoning to it so um, literary theory makes it uh, makes any text systematic uh, logical and uh, and they they impose a particular line of intellectual reasoning to it that is uh, it becomes authentic when you're applying a theory and uh, because the theory has already been made by experts right the marxist theory or the psychoanalytical theory or any kind of theory they have been made by experts they have the points uh, which are very common in all the um, psychoanalytical situations or all the marxist situations so everybody majority of the critics they have agreed upon it isliye wo theories bani hai so when you're applying that theory it not only makes it systematic a uh, logical reasonable but it um, it makes it uh, authentic as well like for example agar aap article likhte hain jo ki mere khayal hai abhi aap log likhenge so if you're going to apply a literary theory or you know framework of a uh, framework jisko kehte hain literary framework your work is going to become more authentic whether it's a linguistic theory or the literary theory dono mein se koi bhi apply karenge it becomes more authentic if there is no theory ho sakta hai aapka article hi reject ho jaye ho sakta hai aapka topic hi reject ho jaye Okay, right? so theories are very important. For example, a psychoanalytical theorist might take the psychological theories of Sigmund Freud or Carl Jung and seek to reach a critical understanding of a novel such as Ernest Hemingway's *For Whom the Bell Tolls*. So this is a novel written by Ernest Hemingway, and they uh, the story or the character might be having some psychological problems in it. So this theory can be applied to it. Okay. Right? um that how uh, in order to reach the critical understanding of the text uh, this theory can be applied to and there are other short stories as well like the fall of house of usher and uh, one more uh, story written by the same writer so they have you know such stories have psychological aspects in them as well any questions guys no ma'am ji no, ma'am no ma'am ji kisne kaha निकाली जाती है यू टेक आउट लिटरी टर्म्स फ्रॉम द टेक्स के इमेजरी कैसी है सिमिलीज कितने हैं मेटाफर्स वेयर आर दू नो डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मेटाफर्स यूज परसोनिफिकेशन कहाँ पे हो रही है दैट इज लिंग्विस्टिक एनालिसिस इज टोटली ऑपोजिट और डिफरेंट फ्रॉम इट दैट यू आर एक्चुअली एनालाइजिंग द लैंग्वेज इट सेल्फ Uh, that how many and what are the like uh, what type of noun phrases are there verb phrases are there it's more um, uh, closer towards grammar linguistic analysis is more towards grammar and you're analyzing not just the sen- uh, sentences but the words as well so that's a linguistic analysis syntax syntax ko jo aap keh sakte hain let let's read literary theories first and then we will select literary uh, you know uh, this question jo ke nadeem ne pucha uh, how to select a particular theory to analyze any literary literary piece you need to study the theory first uh, sorry you need to study a theory obviously but you need to study the read the text first that text will because you are also we are all human beings hame itna to idea ho jayega ki isme theme kya chal raha hai whether it's uh, about like uh, women issues gender issues um, it's about you know uh, politics chal rahi hai or maybe the character is a psychopath or someone so ki, at least itna to idea ho hi jata hai and then when you think that there is uh, you know uh, you you are sure about uh, one aspect whether it's a psychological aspect or 
कैपिटलिस्ट एस्पेक्ट इफ द स्टोरी इज अबाउट सोसाइटी लाइक ए ग्रुप ऑफ सोसाइटी है उसमें डिफरेंट कैरेक्टर्स हैं जो बिहेव कर इंटरेक्ट कर रहे हैं एंड दे आर बिहेविंग विद ईच अदर सो ओबियसली मार्क्सिज्म थियोरी विल गो फिर विल विल बी अप्लाइड टू इट लेकिन जब तक आप टेक्स्ट नहीं पढ़ें जब पहले तो थियरीज पढ़ें ना डिटेल में एंड देन व्हेन यू गोइंग टू रीड एनी टेक्स्ट यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड इट कि इसमें कौन सी थियरी अप्लाई होती है सो लिटरेरी थियरीज आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द लैंग्वेज थियरीज एंड लैंग्वेज जो लिंग्विस्टिक्स जिन्होंने ऑप्ट करना है दे विल बी हैविंग लैंग्वेज थियरीज और इट गाइस आई एम गोइंग टू स्टॉप द प्रेजेंटेशन आई विल टेक द अटेंडेंस um Faiza Rashid present ma'am okay Mohammad Nadeem present ma'am ma'am present hai lekin uski mic ka masla hai ji ji Mohammad Yaqub present ma'am okay Tariq Tariq is not present Arslan present ma'am okay Ali Raza present ma'am Asia present ma'am okay Sidra present Amir Hamza present ma'am Amir Hamza Amir Hamza Iswa present ma'am Mohammad Shweb Jida Zaid present ma'am okay okay Rida present present ma'am Ayub ke sath hi uh, Shweb achini Shweb hi hai theek hai Ijaz Shaheen तीन दफा पहले आपको बुलाया आपसे बात की बट यूर नॉट लॉक देन और मे बी यूर स्लीपिंग अभी फिर नहीं बोलेंगे अल मार्क यू एब्सेंट देम उमैमा बट इरफान उल्ला प्रेजेंट मैम इबाद मोहम्मद इबाद मोहम्मद जुबैर प्रेजेंट मैम फाहद प्रेजेंट मैम लाइबा नूर प्रेजेंट मैम 